Hey, this is David from TechStagger.com. So today I want to show you how you can disable text selection on any website with a single line of CSS. And what I mean is that if you marquee select this with your mouse or you triple click to select this entire element, then you can do Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows to copy it. And now you have that text, right? Now you can paste it anywhere. Now, if you want to disable text selection, that's very simple. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I will explain in a moment why you would want to do this and maybe why you wouldn't want to do this. But first, I'm going to show you how to do it. So those of you who just want the code can just get that. So the way you do this is by first you address what elements you want to uh, disable text selection on. And in this case, it's going to be the paragraph elements. So I'm going to do P and open curly braces here, open close curly braces, I mean, and now I'm going to say user select, that's the property. And I'm going to give it a value of none, like so. And now these two paragraph elements are not selectable anymore. They are disabled, right? I can't mark them. I cannot do anything. This guy over here, though, I can still select. I can still copy. So if I want to disable text selection, of course, I can just, uh, I can make it its own, like so. Just do H1. Or I could also just add it down here, like so. But many ways to do the same thing. However, if you want to disable text selection on an entire website, everything on the website, you can do that by just adding this declaration to the body selector, like so. And now it's going to address all text elements on the website, right? Now I can't select anything. All right. Now, one thing that's important is that this is not going to work necessarily in all browsers this um, declaration of this property, you will have to use vendor prefixes. And there are many different ways you can get the those uh, prefixes. But inside CodePen, uh, the way you can auto compile them or automatically um, generate them is by going inside the settings. And then you make sure that this is set to auto prefixer, the vendor prefixing. And then you go to CSS preprocessor, and then you click on post CSS. And now you click save and close. And now if I do click on this guy and click on view compile CSS, now I get the prefixes for other browsers. So now this is going to address Safari. This is for Firefox. This is for Microsoft. And this is for Chrome and for Opera too as well. All right. So now I'm going to grab these guys because I want to show you something. So I'm going to go back to view uncompiled. I'm going to remove this. Okay. I just copied the other stuff. The, all the other uh, properties. And now I'm going to delete these. And now I'm going to create a utility class also known as a single purpose class or a helper class. And I'm going to call it user select none. And I'm going to paste them in. Right. And the formatting here is terrible. I don't know if I can fix this. Yeah, CodePen has something I don't know what's going on. It used to be much better than this. But sometimes the formatting doesn't work. Anyways, I'm not going to bother with that right now even though it annoys the sh crap out of me. Anyways, now you can apply this class that we just created called user select none. Now you can apply this to any element that you want to. So in instead of making all text unselectable on a website, you can just say, hey, you know what, I just want to make, let's say, um, this very important paragraph, I'm going to make this unselectable. So I'm going to say class, give it a class attribute, and give it user select none. Right. So now the second paragraph is not selectable anymore. Right. I can't do anything, but I can still select this and this and everything else. OK, so why did I do this? Well, that leads into the why you would want to disable text selection on website and maybe why you wouldn't. So here's why you would want to do it sometimes. It's actually very normal that people, competitors, companies, they steal content from each other instead of writing their own original content, they'll just steal others content. And that's really annoying. And it's, depending on which country you're in, it's actually very hard to sue another company and actually win in court. And even if you do win, it might drag out for years and it's expensive and it's annoying. So sometimes you just want to add some friction, right? A layer of, 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 of nuisance or a layer of protection that makes it harder for non tech savvy people to just steal your shit, right? So that's what this would work for. Uh, it's just it's not a bulletproof thing by any means, but most people are not really tech savvy, right? So if, if some of you are thinking, well, David, uh, you can just uh, go to the website and you can just right click even with this text disabled, right? You can just right click, hit inspect, and then you can click on this guy and then you can click on the element you want to steal text from, right? And then you have access to it. And now you can copy this, right? 
Yeah, you can, but most people don't know how to do this. So this is actually pretty effective, at least in, in some industries where they don't really have tech savvy people involved in, in the companies, right? So, so that's why you would want to do something like this. But what I would say is that you would probably want to only deselect or make some text unselectable on your website, not all the text, because that can be really annoying. And that's the why you wouldn't want to do this, right? You, the user experience is not really improved by disabling all text selection on a website because very often people need to copy some text for a reference, for a citation, or just to maybe show their bodies, their friends, their family, some important content from a website, maybe some website that sells some products, right? So you obviously don't want to disable text selection on every website by default. That, that That's not gonna be good user experience design. But in some cases, like the example I mentioned earlier, you might actually want to do this. So. It's one of those things where you probably shouldn't deselect all text or make all text unselectable, but you also sometimes maybe you should do it depending on the circumstances, right? Context is everything. So um, yeah, I hope this has been helpful. And uh, if it has, let me know down in the comment section and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you guys next time.